I thought, oh, I got this. I know how to, I've, I've got a degree, I can do this. Well, I quickly learned that uh, learning about a thing is quite different than actually doing that thing. How does America's heartland respond to economic crisis? Today we visit Peoria, Illinois, and we learn how one Midwestern community is fighting back. I'm Victor Huang, and welcome to The Start Show. I love that opening music by Count Tutu. This is the second episode of The Start Show. We're a broadcast from Right to Start, a campaign to bring entrepreneurial opportunity to everyone. We call entrepreneurs of all backgrounds starters, and starters need our help. Our starters are on the front lines. They're creating new income, starting new businesses, rebooting old businesses. They're the ones creating new jobs and lifting up the rest of us. And it's our job as a community, as a country, to help starters start and grow. So in the Start Show, we're telling their stories by taking a virtual road trip across America. We're discovering new places, learning from new friends, and helping them out. Next stop, Peoria, Illinois. Peoria is a town that makes stuff. Whiskey, bicycles, automobiles, tractors, penicillin. Those are all things this community has been famous for making. There's an old saying in marketing, will it play in Peoria? The idea being that Peoria is a quintessentially American city and a great place to test out new ideas. But Peoria has faced big challenges recently. Two years ago, Caterpillar, the world's largest maker of construction equipment, moved its corporate headquarters from Peoria, where it was founded, to Chicago. That was a hard blow to a proud community. On top of that, they've had to deal with the pandemic and concerns about economic opportunity and racial equity. So how has Peoria responded? Today, we'll ask some of Peoria's starters and the leaders who support them. But first, we've got a new tradition on the Start Show, the Starter Spotlight, featuring local entrepreneurs. To really know the soul of a place, I got three words of advice for you. Try the coffee. Coffee is fuel for entrepreneurs. You can taste the soul of a community in its coffee. I'm keeping up my coffee addiction, I mean habit, by sampling great coffees across our fragrant nation. Today, I'm drinking a brew from Zion Coffee of Peoria. Banu and Michael Hatfield are the starters behind Zion. We'll meet Michael later in the show. This batch from Zion is called Doi Pankon with coffee beans from Thailand. It tastes like orange blossom, honeydew, and sweet citrus. Mm. We're also shining the spotlight on Peoria Made. It's a store for local starters selling arts and crafts and t-shirts just like this one. When you rock this cool shirt for Peoria Made, let there be no doubt about your start cred. And Peoria Made happens to be the startup of one of our guests today. But I'm about to go back to the studio, so let me change back to the appropriate attire. Now I'm pleased to welcome two of Peoria's starters, Christelle Frausto and Mike Hatfield. Christelle runs several businesses, including Mescal and Miel, a high-end Latin liquor store. And she also runs an insurance company, a gas station, and a property management company. In her spare time, she's also the president of Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Mike works for Caterpillar during the day, but in his spare time, he co-owns Zion Coffee with his wife, Banu. Zion works with international coffee bean growers to increase sustainability and social impact. Christelle and Mike, thanks so much for joining us. So uh, both of you are starters, uh, which is what we call entrepreneurs of, of all kinds. And uh, tell us a little bit about the start of your businesses. Uh, what motivated you? How did it go when you started the business? Christelle, uh, let's, let's start with you. I was 17 and I dropped out of high school to open my first business and I failed miserably. It was an inline store at a mall. And traditionally I should have gone to college, but I saw the debt and I prefer to take the debt into business. After I failed, I went to corporate for about 15 years. And then I finally decided to jump back in and we, uh, my husband and I bought an existing restaurant in Chicago. We ran that for a few years and then we wanted to expand, but it was not affordable. So we looked around for a place to move where it would be affordable to live and to buy into more businesses. Peoria was definitely in it. We've been here for almost four years. We have a couple of businesses, but now I'm starting my first startup. Uh, talk a little bit about moving from Chicago to Peoria. I mean, that's, 
you know, traditionally people thought about moving from smaller places to bigger places, but you went in the other way. I went against um, again, I, everything I grew up with. My, I left my family behind, my friends, my whole life. Peoria has a really more laid back way of living, but the cost of living is more affordable and the people are, is really the difference. So I thought about moving back to Peoria my first year, back to Chicago my first year, but I've connected with so many people. I was looking for support and that's really where I fell in love with being here because everyone is building alliances across the city with different, with the city, with organizations. And they basically went like this. They handed a key to me and they're like, whatever you need for the Hispanic community, let's make it happen. Uh, Mike, tell us about Zion Coffee. And you did this while you still have a day job. Really the way that we started, the thing that got us into this was how do we come up alongside these um, small coffee farmers that are on the other side of the cup. So this was the challenge for us is this, this value chain that's put together for coffee rewards everyone at the very end of that cycle um, with the, you know, the smallest amount of time into it and the greatest amount of profit. And so we decided that we wanted to take an active interest in the farmer and help them figure out uh, new access to market, uh, new products that they could have and to really share profits with them to help them grow their business. For the first few years, we ran that out of our basement. Uh, so we would have our, uh, our hair nets on and gloves and we would be packing subscription orders, uh, doing mail order. We kind of just grew from there to pop-ups and some other things and, uh, and then eventually opened up a brick and mortar. What was it about the community that, that helped or hurt you the most? My wife is from, uh, from Turkey and has been here in the States since uh, 91. Um, and I grew up in this area. I think we've been interested in what Peoria is on the verge of becoming, not so much about what it is today. I've seen it uh, as a very static um, you know, community throughout the years. There's always been, we're going to do this development, you know, this area of, of town that's been vacant is going to come online and it's always been on the cusp. It's always next, you know, five years out, five years out, five years out. And I think um, that's what we've been excited about seeing. We decided that um, we wanted to be a part of this, uh, this warehouse uh, district in Peoria. And we got in kind of early, actually, we uh, proclaimed that as that was going to be the destination for us. And we were going to have to draw people down there. The change is coming, the East Bluff, the South End, people are talking about what needs to happen in Peoria to grow together. And, and it's exciting to, to be part of like change. And I love to have my meetings at Zion Coffee. It's a great place to meet and it's a great atmosphere. And I'm just so impressed at your story, you know, working from your basement, that that's incredible. And, and your wife being an immigrant, I mean, I can relate to that. I was born in Mexico. I, I come to this country and, and um, you know, both are my countries. I see that there's a lot of small businesses on every corner when I go back to Mexico and you want that confidence here. You want people to be confident to open small businesses in Peoria, but part of the right to start movement, like you said, is not leaving anyone behind. And that includes immigrants. There's people that want to do things correctly, pay taxes, open businesses. They come to me and they come to me for, for advice or consultations. And I try to guide them, but there is a lot of red tape. So realistically, they're here now. How do we help them be part of a thriving business ecosystem? Do you both feel that uh, people should feel more proactive in trying to change their communities instead of wait around? I would agree because um, with some of our community, uh, we are now getting programs where people with ITINs, which is your, your tax identification number, can take out a loan for either home ownership, a business, or a car loan, where before the banks would you know, close the door to them. And that, that's important for them uh, because you do see um, in Peoria a lot of the same leaders doing the same work and, and then they tend to burn out. It, it is hard. It, it's hard on two levels. It's hard on a personal level as an activist and business owner because you burn out yourself. There are also other ways to start small. And I think those are also wins where we get people that are maybe selling food from home and now mm -hmm. will rent a commercial kitchen to start and then grow from there. Uh, those are the small wins that we're looking for. And even our chamber, it's all volunteer based. Everyone has either a job, a corporate job or a business that they're running or a startup that they're trying to work on or a side hustle. And, and we welcome everyone and even young professionals too, because we get a lot of storytelling, a lot of advice. We have attorneys on our board. Um, everyone just tries to share their, their, their experience. And that's so valuable to us. Both of you seem to be uh, talking about this point. It's so much harder than it, you expect it to be and than it should be. 
I mean, is that something that uh, uh, you think uh, is something that policymakers should be tackling more directly? I think uh, some voices are uncomfortable being represented or insecure to be heard. Um, some voices, for example, um, some restaurants have closed or may not be able to reopen in this in this COVID um, atmosphere. And is there any support for a business that's closing and not able to open? The business owner is in debt. Uh, what kind of support can we give them? I know we're focusing as um, with with the options that are out there, like the PPP loans, the SBA loans, on existing businesses that are working or that are running as of April. There's some businesses that don't qualify for any support. It's very frustrating. They need help too. They need represented. They need a voice of advocacy, whether it's language barrier for immigration reasons, or maybe they don't know who to talk to. Those are the people that it, it's got to be a relationship building. If you could fix or change one thing in Peoria's entrepreneurial you know, ecosystem, what would that be? I think the access to capital, you know. For us, uh, because we both had jobs um, and we were able to, you know, put some money into the business that we had saved, we could, you know, go after a conventional SBA loan, you know, to, to get the financing we needed. But that is, you had collateral, to, you had some savings, you could actually put we up did. security. Yep. We did, but you know, because we we don't own the building we're in, we also had to pledge everything we owned, including some of our used vehicles that uh, the banks like. Yeah, it's really not worth anything. So, you know, it's, it, it's literally putting your entire, uh, you know, future on the line for that. This comes from a person of, of white privilege, right? Of, of not having, you know, I speak about barriers and my barriers, I'm, I'm sure were minuscule to the barriers that a lot of people have trying to start the business. I think a relationship with the city is very important. Um, I, you hear different stories, different experiences from different people on different barriers, like Mike just said. Um, you know, you might go on Facebook and hear, you know, a lot of complaints, but um, on the flip side, it, it's important to, to understand how the, the programs work, um, what roles people in, the, in City Hall have, what, what systems they have in place to support. So City of Peoria has something called a one-stop shop. They meet every Monday at 3.30 and they invite anyone that has questions, you have all departments there, the police department, the fire department, code enforcement, and they're just there to answer your questions and help guide you through the process of opening your business. We have to be patient and kind with each other and, and really respect uh, where we're going now. If there's an issue, if we want to complain, let's say we don't like the city budget, okay, then let's go to the meetings and let's, let's listen and learn what the issues are. And then we can have an educated, informative um, opinion. And then we work together on that. Well, thank you both. This has been wonderful. I really have enjoyed this conversation a lot. And I, I love the energy uh, from what you're doing. And uh, we'll you know, look forward to continue to track your work and the changes you're making in the town. And I'm going to enjoy finishing uh, my, my Zion coffee here as well, which is wonderful. Now it's time for a special feature we call Starter Q&A. Starters get to ask their burning questions and our leaders respond. We've got a question from two starters in Peoria, Dee and John Ingalls, who run a business called Smiley Graphics Studio. Our biggest pain point as a two-person uh, company is healthcare costs. The premiums are almost $2,000 a month on the open market. What is it that the local legislator can do to curb the costs of healthcare uh, premiums. for small healthcare for small premiums, businesses. Right, yeah. for small businesses. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for the question. Since we don't have a state or federal legislator on this episode, I'll take a shot at this one. Healthcare is a huge problem for starters, not just in Peoria, but everywhere. Large established businesses get insurance at lower costs. Why? One big reason, because they're bigger. It's not a level playing field for little guys and gals starting up. So at Right to Start, we're asking government to do more. When you start and grow a new business, you deserve access to the same level of affordable care that a big business gets. We've got more detailed policies on our website at righttostart.org. Our last question comes from Marcy Goodwin, a social media marketer in Peoria. And we have a special guest responding, the Lieutenant Governor of Illinois, Juliana Stratton. I was wondering, what is the state doing to promote this area uh, to other startups, to other innovators and entrepreneurs from outside the state um, as a great place to relocate? Thank you for having me, Victor. I know that our Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity has been working closely with the Peoria Chamber of Commerce um, and really trying to connect people with networking groups or other organizations that can help them find 
the perfect location for a business for those who are looking to relocate or start a business right in the Peoria area. Next, we get to meet two leaders in Peoria, Leanne Brown and Councilwoman Denise Moore. Councilwoman Moore is an entrepreneur and was also the first black woman elected to the Peoria City Council. Leanne Brown is in the village of Morton in the Peoria region. Leanne is CEO of the Morton Economic Development Council and Executive Director of the Chamber of Commerce. Welcome. Wonderful to have you both here. Hello. Great to be here. Hello. Thank you for having us. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for being part of the show. Uh, so uh, tell us about Peoria. Uh, we, we can't be there in person right now, but we're visiting virtually. What makes Peoria such a, a, a great place for people that are starting businesses? I'm not a native Peorian. You know, I'm originally from Chicago, came to Peoria by way of Bloomington, Normal, Illinois, uh, because for some reason my husband wanted me to live with him. And so <laughs> when I came here, I noticed that there, there was a, a lot of opportunity for small businesses that had existed in bigger cities that I had lived in, but not so much here. There weren't very many um, different types of diverse businesses here. Um, you may have had some Italian businesses, or you may have some, the, the city is heavily German. It was founded by, or settled, I should say, a lot of Germans came here. So there were a lot of German entrepreneurs here uh, and Italian entrepreneurs here, but not so much uh, Asian or Hispanic or African-American. And so I saw the potential being from Chicago, where it's really a melting pot. You see everything everywhere. I knew it could happen here, too. Denise, you started to talk about the, the issues for people of color. Um, can you talk a bit around sort of, you know, gaps for entrepreneurs of color trying to start businesses in the black community Absolutely. or in other communities? One is um, informed, being informed about what's, a, what's a, a available. I almost said education, but I don't mean academic education. I mean the information that you need to have. And the second one is financing. And so I have a degree in business administration. And so before I started my business back in 1995, I thought, oh, I got this. I know how to, I've, I've got a degree, I can do this. Well, I quickly learned that uh, learning about a thing is quite different than actually doing that thing. And mm -hmm. when I went out looking for assistance, the, the people who provided the assistance were available from nine to five. And because I was working a full-time job, by the time I got off work, they're closed. They weren't open on Saturday. So long story short, there, there's a lack of information available and uh, people or organizations available for those folks who are working a full-time job because they have to and having the funds to, to start those businesses. Oftentimes, entrepreneurs will go to the bank with a wonderful idea to the, and they want to talk to the banker and they're just so excited and so passionate about what they want to do. And the banker look at them and say, okay, so can you mortgage your home to get this done? And that's quite startling when someone's mortgage my house, I, I, I want your money. Well, it's a great idea to the entrepreneur, but the banker's looking at it from a totally different perspective. So we try to get people ready for that conversation. And so education and uh, funding are the biggest problems and barriers for minority businesses trying to get off the ground here in Peoria. How do you actually tackle that hard issue of access to knowledge and people and resources? That, that, that seems like uh, one of these things that's so soft and hard to capture. Yeah, you definitely feel like you can never do enough in, in right. that area. And, you know, we've done some small things here in Morton, specifically our, our Morton mixers where we bring entrepreneurs um, that have been down this journey for quite some time to host a fireside chat and allow them to share their business story. What has been your challenges? Um, what was your most pivotal moment? How, why and how did you say no? And what resources did you use to help um, people hear that, yes, there's been challenges, and yes, I've had hard times, but I've had some incredible opportunities, and this is how I move through those. From the city council perspective, what I challenge the city um, manager to do, when we have projects or we're, we're trying to acquire uh, materials for supplies or whatever, I'm always asking, what is, if it's a contractor, a tradesman, uh, what is the, con the minority participation 
that that contractors bring into the table so that we give opportunities to those minority contractors, minority vendors, those small business owners, women, veterans, that we're making sure that we're spreading that money around. And people do business with people they know. And you never get to know anybody else if you stay in the same place. So challenging them to go out and look for other opportunities and other vendors and other places. I know, Leanne, you've been involved in the Fourth Fridays program in Morton. Yeah, it's a good uh, placemaking act- activity and it allows our artisans and our uh, small businesses and, and those that are trying to validate their market potential uh, to engage with the community and customers uh, to showcase their their products, their services, and their talents, and and help them uh, move through their their business journeys. One of the challenges we see is that entrepreneurship tends to get typecast as like tech startups nowadays. Uh, but the way you, both of you are talking about it, it's really around all forms of entrepreneurial activity. Denise, can you talk a bit about that? I try to tell folks it's okay if you're not in IT. Everybody's not in IT, but if you're a baker. If you're an electrician, I try to get them to understand how to package their service or product in in a novel way that people will come to you and looking for your service or your product. I encourage folks to utilize your own resources. You know a lot of people and you don't even realize it. You have a lot of customers out there and you don't even know it because you assume they're getting whatever this is from someplace else. Denise, you've been working with uh, minority businesses, and Leanne, you, you work with rural businesses. What is the role of entrepreneurship in trying to overcome disparities, like whether it's economic or regional disparities or geographic disparities or race disparities? Well, I look at ad- entrepreneurship as, you know, advancing opportunity. Something I always encourage people to think about and say is who's miss- who else is missing from the table and who else needs to know this information? And I think just bringing people to the table to meet each other and talk through those opportunities arise. And that's where our entrepreneurs can really um, play a very vital role. So my husband and I had, uh, we opened a, what was called a cultural shop. And we sold books and and greeting cards and and lightweight um, clothing items that were from the African diaspora. And we were on the campus of Illinois State University. And there were years where 65 to 70% of our clientele did not look like us. We created what was considered a safe place to come in and explore the culture, to understand more about this African-American history. Folks were looking at that as a place to come and really be educated and then walk out with something that they never thought that they would have. And so our store was more than just a retail establishment. It became a cultural site. It became an educational place to go. And the entrepreneurs that are in that town are vested in that town, invested in their block and in their city versus a a big box company that might come in. The entrepreneur who's from there is willing to roll up their sleeves a little bit tighter and provide what you need so that they survive and you're satisfied because you have a product that you, that you like. This is great. Thank you so much, uh, Councilwoman Moore, uh, Leanne Brown of the Morton EDC. Thank you so much for your time. I've really, really enjoyed this conversation a lot. Thank you for Take having care. me. Yeah, thanks. Take care, guys. Next, our Mayor Jim Artis and Jake Hammond. Mayor Artis has been the mayor of Peoria since 2005, and he's been an ongoing champion for entrepreneurs. Jake is a serial starter. He's founded several companies and organizations, including the Peoria Innovation Alliance. Jake is also our host for our visit today. Mayor Artis, Jake, thanks for joining us on The Start Show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah, it's great Great to have you. What makes this, this city such a special city to both of you? Peoria has got that uh, fabulous reputation that most people have heard before. How does it play in Peoria? Being really uh, centered in the heart of of the United States, uh, we've always been a location that uh, prides ourselves on uh, being a a test market for products. You know, mid-America, how does it play in Peoria? I'm curious, how does entrepreneurship play in Peoria now? We really got involved and and kind of got this movement going uh, from a grassroots effort probably eight years ago or so with the creation of Startup Peoria. 
Um, I think the entrepreneurs were here. They're still here, right? But in terms of the support mechanisms and things like that, we were still at kind of an early kind of a raw stage, if you will. So we had some different pieces and components and, you know, we had some different resources and organizations that were doing that. But I think over the past eight years or so, this more concerted effort, right, around kind of filling in those gaps. You've done this great uh, uh, project with um, you know, local entrepreneurs, essentially like a cluster of uh, starter or starter starter companies, like making handicraft and local goods. Mm-hmm. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? We've identified about, about 25 different merchants right now. Um, everything from t-shirt makers to stickers to fermented foods, even uh, letterpress folks, all kinds of different things, a wide variety. Uh, and what we did is we went out and, and searched for those, found these merchants and have a storefront or will once again have a storefront where they uh, sell their goods on a consignment basis, uh, but also partner with our Convention of Visitors Bureau to make it a downtown visitor center, but really just trying to bring some exposure and awareness to um, not necessarily just high growth startups, but also these you know small businesses, lifestyle businesses that are uh, really good at their craft and doing some pretty incredible things. Mayor Artis, you talked before around Caterpillar moving its headquarters from Peoria to Chicago. How has the city adapted to that and have entrepreneurs played a role in that ad- adaption and, and trying to move forward? Well, I, you know, I think just uh, due to the fact that they were here for as long as they were uh, at, at that level, at the executive level, it was a, it was a gut punch and uh, kind of hard on the ego, to, to be really honest with you. But they took a relatively small number of executives up to the suburbs of Chicago, and we still have a large concentration of Caterpillar employees still here. These starters aren't uh, real parochial with their ideas. They don't. They they don't huddle in a in a silo and get in a bunker and keep it all of themselves. They they work together. They share ideas. They they help others uh, figure out how to make their product better. And it just it, it just kind of feeds on it itself. And 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 the energy created by that group attracts more people uh, to want to be in that environment. Uh, to start their product. What action will you take to help break barriers for starters? Well, I think we're going to try to continue uh, what we've been doing. Jake really has been uh, a very strong connection between the actual entrepreneurs and starters of the world and the policymakers, uh, and not just on a local level. You know, Jake's got great contacts and at the state capitol and, and out in D.C. too. So what we're going to do, which I, I think is the most important thing that policymakers can do, is is be that uh, help be that conduit. Uh, between the businesses and you know where they want to land at the other side, making it business friendly, do the things that we can to support that networking, uh, uh, supporting the ability to get financing. They want the government to get out of the way, let them do business, but in the areas that we can assist them uh, and, and make things smoother and eliminating red tape, uh, that's what we need to do. And that's, that's been our commitment to uh, the people in this community. It's that Midwestern way of life of helping out your neighbor, um, being in it for the, you know, the good of the community and, and the betterment of all of us. That's been very apparent specifically in the, in the last 10 years or so uh, that we're all trying to reach, you know, trying to move towards a common goal and, and all trying to make, you know, make the community better. Thank you both, Mayor Artis, Jake Hammond. Thanks for joining us on The Start Show. Great. Thanks, Victor. Thanks for having us. So to close our Start Show, we've got a special treat. Amelia Lee is a brilliant emerging musician in Peoria who's been winning international piano contests. And she's six years old. Enjoy the lovely tones of Amelia Lee as she gives us a tour of Peoria. Meanwhile, be sure to subscribe to our channel, hit that button, and sign up for our newsletter at righttostart.org. We'll see you next time on The Start Show. I am from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. Going to Louisiana, my true love for to see. It's real.